we have not found it helpful to focus on the difference between Scarlett's sentence and that of the applicant. As reflected in the judge's approach, sentencing children has to be individualistic. Two years is not a small difference for defendants of this age. And whilst it was appropriate that Scarlett should receive a longer sentence, the judge also had to take account of the mitigating factors in her case, which included a lack of maturity and a diagnosis of a severe form of conduct dissocial disorder. For these reasons, we conclude that the sentence imposed by the judge on the applicant was neither manifestly excessive nor wrong in principle. The proposed grounds are not arguable. The applicant's application for leave to appeal against sentence is refused. Thank you, Mr Littler. Thank you, Ms Deer. Now, can I just um, hand down, please, the uh, full written judgment? Well, there you have uh, Lady Chief Justice uh, Baroness Carr giving her judgment there as uh, Eddie Ratcliffe, one of the killers of uh, Brianna Jai, appealed against his sentence. Uh, the Lady Chief Justice there at the end saying that that application has been refused. Let's bring in our correspondent Matthew Thompson, who's covering this for us from the uh, Royal Courts of Justice. Uh, sorry, from uh, Westminster, as I can see. Uh, and Matthew, thanks so much for being with us. So look, uh, Lady Chief Justice there went through some of the reasons as to why, saying essentially that Justice Yip in the original sentencing was correct when she started with a minimum term of 20 years and that the aggravating and mitigating factors balanced one another out. Yes, exactly. I mean, it was a full-throated backing, really, of the original judgment in February of this year. Now, what Ratcliffe's lawyers have tried to argue in the hearing today was that the original sentence of a minimum term of 20 years hadn't fully taken into account count Eddie Ratcliffe's age and maturity and effectively what the Court of Appeal has just ruled is that in fact the judge in the original sentence did do that and was entitled to reach the conclusions that she did. So effectively the original judge had balanced, as you say, aggravating factors in this murder, amongst which were the sadistic conduct in which Ratcliffe participated. Uh, the uh, motivations which included prejudice towards Brianna Jai because of the fact that she was transgender uh, and various other mitigating factors, the brutality, for example, of the, the actual killing itself. And those aggravating factors were balanced in the original judgment with mitigating factors, which included a diagnosis of autistic spectrum disorder um, and also uh, Ratcliffe's relative maturity for his age. Um, and that on the balance of those two things, the judge then concluded that the minimum starting term should be 20 years. That was challenged by his lawyers today. And effectively, what the Court of Appeal has just said is that the judge in the original sentencing case was entirely correct and entitled to balance those two things out or those various things out in the way that was done and therefore has refused this permission to appeal. The question now is, well, what happens next? And is that the end of the road? To which the answer is probably but not entirely. So there is one, at least one other avenue which might be uh, a referral to the Criminal Cases Review Commission, uh, which does occasionally take referrals on sentencing. It mostly exists to overturn convictions or at least to have convictions reassessed by the Court of Appeal. But there is a, a small uh, history of it doing similar things with sentencing. So that could happen. But again, it would have to be a fairly strong case. And the ratio is not great. So I just had a quick flick back through um, a couple of last few years of accounts. And for example, in 2019-2020, the CCRC got, I think, 29 sentencing cases referred to it, and it only then suggested that the Court of Appeal look at two of those. So the ratio is not high, and it's quite rare. So broadly speaking, this is probably the end of the road uh, for Radcliffe's appeal, unless at some point in the future some unknown information, new information comes to light, which might materially change things. But on this, the Court of Appeal was fairly clear today that the judge's original sentence can and should stand.